ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, <laughs> ladies and gents, I got a question. One of the most profound questions that could ever be asked or answered at this time. There are at least one billion people on this planet who believe that Jesus is God. So do me a favor. No, no, seriously. Answer this question for me. You don't have to contact me to answer this question. Just answer the question for yourselves. It says, then Jesus cometh, then cometh Jesus from Galilee to the Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and cometh thou to me? Jesus answering unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight up or straight away out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the King James Version of the scriptures. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and read Rotherham. Yes, that's the unique part. Does Rotherham, yes, Rotherham does have Matthew. Where you at, Matthew? The Gospel according to Matthew. And we're going to go to the third chapter. And the reason why we're doing this is because, like I said, there are a billion people on this planet who believe that Jesus is God. So let's do this. Because they believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit all being one. Here we have Jesus on earth. The Holy Spirit coming down out of the heavens and God in the heavens. Three distinct entities in three distinct places at the exact same moment. Now, people say, well, that's not enough. Of course it is. Because, well, you'll see in a second. It says, but Jesus answering unto him, suffer me even now. And thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. We'll, we'll, un, we'll get you to understand what it means by suffer. Because it doesn't mean, oh, he's suffering, oh, he's in pain. That's not that type of suffering. And Jesus, having been immersed, straight away went up from the water. See, baptism is not no sprinkling of water on nobody's head. It is a complete immersion of the body. That's why it says immersed, complete immersion. Straight away from the water and lo the heavens were opened to him and he saw the spirit of god descending like a dove coming upon him it didn't say and he saw his spirit it says he saw the spirit of god descending upon him i didn't write this people then it says and lo a voice out of heaven saying this is my son he didn't say this is me in the flesh incarnated. No, he said, this is my son, the beloved, in whom I delight. But there are billions of people who know this, who have read this hundreds of times, some of them thousands of times, and it is spoken of in their churches. And yet they still profess to contradict this, to believe contrary to what it says. Now, again, I didn't write this, okay? It, it's not my writing. So we're going to go to what's known as the Study Bible. And we're going to go, it's called the Study Bible for a reason. That's because it's got all them references this, 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 and everything in it. Okay, and we can go to Matthew, the third chapter. Yeah, this is it right here. And we got to go to third again. We can go to the fourth because the fourth, we can just scroll up to the third. So we're going to start with verse 14. But the latter tried to prevent him, saying, I am the one who needs to be baptized by you. And are you coming to me? And Jesus replied to him, Let it be this way, or excuse me, let it be this time. For in that way, it is suitable for us to carry out all that is righteous. Then he quit preventing him. You see, preventing or suffering. He stopped preventing him. Okay, after being baptized, you see, if Jesus was God, who did he get baptized in the name of? 
Sorry. Why would God get baptized? Not a. Hey, my bad. I'm going to continue. Jesus immediately came up from the water, and look, the heavens were opened up. And he saw God's spirit descending like a dove and coming upon him. Is this where they merged together and did the Wonder Twin powers? No. Let's continue. Look, also, a voice from the heavens said, this is my son. You notice how they all say the same thing? This is my son. Not this is me. Not this is, you're just another part of me. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I'm sorry, apologize. The beloved whom I have approved. Again, ladies and gentlemen, this is not Jesus calling him his son. Now, this is this is why it's a study Bible. It's a reference right here. 2-7. Let me proclaim the decree of Jehovah. He said to me, you are my son. Today I have become your father. It was a prophecy, people that he would send his son to the earth, that his son would be anointed with Holy Spirit. That was the prophecy. That was what was being fulfilled at that point. Wait, hold on. <laughs> let me, I apologize. Uh, I went to the wrong one. Let me, let me show it to you because it tells us just before this, but nobody pays attention, okay? Nobody pays attention that We'll go, well, we'll go right about, do we go here? Well, we'll go here. It says, this is in fact the one spoken of through Isaiah the prophet, saying, in these words, a voice of one calling out in the wilderness, prepare the way of Jehovah and make his road straight. Now John was clothed in camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Ladies and gentlemen, these were prophecies that were being fulfilled. Not only this was this being fulfilled as prophecy, but we also have the section up here where and Herod had died. Look, Jehovah's angel appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Get up, take the young child and its mother, and go into the land of Israel. For those who were seeking the life of the young child are dead. So he got up, and took the young child and the child's mother, and he entered into the land of Israel. But hearing that Archelaus, Archelaus ruled in Judea instead of his father, Herod, he was afraid to go there. Moreover, being given divine warning in a dream, he withdrew into the territory of Galilee, and he came and he settled in a city named Nazareth in order to fulfill what was spoken through the prophets. He will be called a Nazarene. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm bringing up this point. We're going to go to Isaiah. And Isaiah says, a twig will grow from the stump of Jesse and a sprout from the roots will bear fruit. Now that's one. Got to go to the second one. Hold on now. Just wait a minute. Oh, I lost it. We don't want, uh, yeah, we got Nazarene. Give me one second. I need the 52, 53.2. He will come up like a twig before him, like the root out of a parched land. That's the reference to the previous scripture. No stately form will he have, nor any splendor. And when we see him, his appearance does not draw us to him. This 50, chapter 53 is a prophecy that Jesus fulfilled. There are several things in this that he fulfilled, including how he healed other people's wounds. Okay, how he bore the punishments for the people. How he was crushed for the people's errors and crushed for the people's transgressions. That's what he came to do. Now, for those of you who are staying on to this point, listening to this, the only reason why I bring that to your attention, because I was just going over it this morning. I actually read over that this morning and I realized, see, this thing says I have 31 trackers. We'll talk about this in a second. But I realized, I said, wait a minute. We have all of these people who believe that Jesus is God. But here, Jesus is getting baptized. Jesus was made subject to humans 
God could never be subject to a human. <laughs> Sorry, it's impossible because it would defy the principles for which he exists. See, I keep telling people, just like law, you can't get rid of principles. The courts cannot ignore principle. I don't care what rulings the Supreme Court makes. People need to understand the Supreme Court makes rulings, but if there's always a technicality. They always do a technicality in every single ruling to protect themselves because they can be held liable, ladies and gentlemen. That's why there is a policy, a procedure for every court. So when you hear a court making all of these barbacious little stupid statements, you need to understand that they are wording it in such a way that where they cannot be held liable because they're not actually doing certain things. Okay, so back to the point. If Jesus was baptized, how could he be God? And in whose name was he baptized? Remember, John baptized individuals in the name of God. He That's why it says, we were baptized in the baptism of John, and we've never heard of this thing called the Holy Spirit, because John didn't baptize people in the Holy Spirit. It was Jesus who started that. Go ahead and look at John, the 16th chapter. Told his disciples that they would be baptized in the Holy Spirit not many days from then. That Holy Spirit baptism doesn't happen at the time a person is in the water like Jesus. But never mind, we won't get into that conversation. It's too long of a conversation. So not only does Jesus get baptized, and not only does the Holy Spirit descend upon him, showing that they are not the same, but then a voice out of heaven being God. But we have individuals who believe that all three are the same, and they don't seem to understand the Bible never contradicts itself. If there is a contradiction, that means that someone has taken and changed the wording because the Bible has never contradicted itself. I had somebody tell me the other day, he, I'm sorry, I got to open it again. He told me that there were two creation accounts. And I'm like, huh? Yeah, he said there are two creation accounts. I said, really? I said, uh-uh, you need to show me that, because I ain't never heard that before, ladies and gentlemen. I never heard that before. And then as he started talking, and he started mentioning things about this account right here. Okay, let me show you why people think there are two. And this one right here, okay, this thing says outline of contents. So chapter one, and this is the easiest way to show it to you. Chapter one, verses one and two only talks about the creation of the heavens and the earth. So the sun is already there, the stars are already there, and the heavens, all of the planets are already there. But now we got epochs. Hoo-wee! The six days start here. The six, this is not the first day, the creation of the heavens and the earth. This is just showing you what happened in the beginning. Okay, that's why it says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. This is an outline. This shows you what happened on each day, but this is not telling you that this happened and this happened and this happened and giving you a chronological order. Then chapter two, pay attention. Chapter two is God resting on the seventh day, and he's still in that seven-day rest. Yes, because it's longer than seven days, people. He created days for the earth. His days are longer. His days are at least a thousand years long. Okay. Then it shows how he created everything. He now puts man and woman in the garden, and then he forms man out of the dust of the garden. Well, no, it pre he prepares the garden for him. Sorry. See, man and woman in the garden, but he prepares the garden for him. That's why it's 5 through 25. Then verse number 7 is where he creates man out of dust and stuff. So this is an outline. So let's show you how Genesis is an outline within and of itself. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. This is completely separate from the rest. This has nothing to do with this, this, or this. Then it says, now, meaning time interval. Now shows that there is a time interval. Now denotes time. Here and now. Okay. Now devotes, denotes time. So that means that there is a period of time between these two. That's why that word is being used. The earth was formless and desolate, and there was darkness upon the surface of the watery deep. So the earth is already here, but everybody thinks that it was completely covered in water. That's not true. 
there were mountains and there was volcanics and eruptions and all of that stuff. Well, anyway, that's the first chapter. Now, when we get to the bottom of the first chapter, when we're going to get to the good part, we get to the second chapter. It says, thus the heavens and the earth and everything in them were completed. Okay, so guess what? This is not a continuation of chapter one. This is letting you know what was to have taken place next. God was going to rest. He was going to rest from all of the work that he has created what respects the earth. Not respects the heavens, but the earth. Then number four says, this is the history of the heavens and the earth. So now we're going to have history of the heaven and the earth. And it tells us, chapter 2, what happened. The prohibition, don't eat from my tree, putting them in the garden. Don't eat from my tree. And woman being created after man. And then chapter 3, the first lie, the first sin, is somebody lying. Okay? And then the eating from the tree. The second sin. And the third sin, the other person eating from the tree. That's the outline. And then the punishment that was pronounced on every single person. You guys just watched that so called hypocrisy of a trial. Now, I'll tell you this the idiot shouldn't have lied, he said he wasn't there, because the attorneys told him to say he wasn't there. He had no idea. He didn't remember about the recording of the son recording him being in the kennel. So even if he did it, that right there would solidify things. It doesn't prove anything. It just proves he lied. Hey, it just proves he lied. And the jury, the decision they came through, once I heard the juror um, say that that was the thing that sealed it for him. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, that would have been the thing that would have sealed it for me. Murdoch could not get out, out of that, even if he said that he had done this and done that. That's how lawyers think. When they asked him where he was, he should have just told them where he was. If he had nothing to do with it, then he had nothing to do with it. But the problem is he lied. Now, he could have just said... I'm going to need to speak with you guys after I speak with counsel. He's an attorney. So what? He would have went to jail for a night. They would have had nothing to hold him with because they had no evidence. They had no evidence against him. Blood splatter and all of that, they didn't have any evidence. But again, there was a pronouncement of sentencing because there's a procedure. Well, that's all this was. This was them pronouncing the results of the sin. Chapter 4, the birth of the first person on earth and his brother, and in the others, we find out in the fifth chapter, and then the first sin, and then the first secondary punishment, which was the banishment of the young man and the protection, showing how we couldn't take matters into our own hand. That's why they couldn't kill Cain. They couldn't take revenge. Remember, he's always said vengeance is his, so that was proving that vengeance is his. Then the fifth chapter. The fifth chapter is the most, in my opinion, one of the most important out of all the chapters. Because notice what this says. This is the book of Adam's history. Now, what is, what is Adam's history? All of us. Ladies and gentlemen, we're descendants of Adam. This is the book of his history. But nobody pays attention. From Genesis all the way to Revelation. It has to do with mankind. Okay? It has to do with mankind. This is the book of the history of Adam. Now, as we learn, Adam had other sons and daughters. Okay? It says he became father to a son named Seth. And then he had became father to sons and daughters. So when Cain, pay attention, when Cain was alive, Cain had a wife 
that he would be able to choose from because then they practiced this method of intermarrying. Why? Because there was only, originally there was only two people on the planet. Then there was four, then it was five, then it was nine, 10, or 11, 12. We don't know how many other children Adam had, but we know he had enough. Enough for Cain to take a wife. Now, how do we know? Well, watch this. After that, Cain had sexual relations with his wife, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Enoch. Well, it's Enoch. Oh, by the way, here's the thing. Is this the book of Enoch they're talking about? No, they're talking about the other Enoch. There, there were two. It says then he engaged, and but that Enoch didn't write a book because that book would have had to survive the flood. So what was it written on? Because we don't hear nothing about Noah bringing no book into the ark and the book of Enoch being something that was supposed to be hidden. Lord have mercy. All right. It says then he engaged in building a city and named the city after his son, Enoch. And later, Irad was born to Enoch, and he became father to Mahaliel, and Mahaliel became father to Methusiel, and Methusiel became father to Lamech. Okay, Cain got his wife from his sister, and their children got their wives from their sisters. That's how population was continuing at that time. It's not allowed anymore, but we know it used to be allowed. Okay, so the question is again, if Jesus went to get baptized, could it have been for three reasons? One, dedicating himself to do his father's will, which would he continued to say throughout his ministry, I've come to do your will, oh my God. It was prophesied in the book of, Webel, I mean, not Revelation. I apologize. I almost made a mistake right there. Okay. It was prophesied. Let's go here and let's go Psalms. I got to find it because I know it's 40. So let's go 40. And I don't want that. I said 40. Okay. Let's see. Look, I have come in the scroll. It is written about me. To do your will, O oh my God, is my delight, and your law is deep within me. So again, Jesus was fulfilling prophecy by getting baptized. To do God's will, he had to be dedicated. He had to symbolize that dedication by baptism, because baptism is a symbol of repentance. Even though he had committed no sin, he told John, let it be this way, for all things must take place that is righteous. He was setting an example, ladies and gentlemen. That's why. So the question is, if he was God, why would he get baptized? Well, he needed to set an example. No, no, he did not need to set an example if he was God. But if he was God's son, oh, I'm sorry, to do your will, oh, my God, is my delight. If How can Jehovah do his own will? <laughs> okay, he says, look, I do not restrain my lips, oh, Jehovah, as you well know. If they're the same person, there'd be no reason for him to say this. Again, this is a prophecy written in scripture at least 1,300 years before he's even born. That was written. So, again, there are a billion people on this planet at least who believe that Jesus is God. There has never been any proof of this. They just believe it. And you can't step on another person's beliefs, ladies and gentlemen, because what people believe, if you only believe, okay, what people believe is sometimes so far etched in everything, history, life, everything. Now, 
I can't stay on because I have work to do this morning, quite a bit of work, believe it or not. And so I have to let you all get back to your day. But again, the question is, if he's God, then why did he get baptized? And in whose name did he get baptized in? And then the Holy Spirit coming down like a dove and it being seen and it not being Jesus. And then God's voice coming out of heaven saying, this is my son, not this is me incarnated. You don't see any scriptures talking about the Trinity. The word Trinity doesn't appear in the Bible, but not even a concept of a Trinity appears in the Bible. But it does appear in ancient Mesopotamia. It is a pagan belief of a triune God. Go ahead. You'll see the three-headed statues all the time. The original one was Nimrod, the mighty hunter, the warrior, and the king. Nimrod. If you don't know who Nimrod is, do some research on Nimrod. Because you'll see that's where the Trinity and the cross comes from. But I didn't, hey, hey, don't take my word for it. Go do your own research. Y'all know how things are here on this channel. I don't tell y'all what to think. I show you everything. Now, I'm not going to show you the thing about Nimrod. Oh, no, no, go do your own research on Nimrod. Okay, you get to understand. Do your own research on the origins of the Trinity. No, oh, snap. Sorry, y'all just, y'all has no idea. I'm going to have to pause y'all for a second. We're going to ask Kev. I don't have my microphone on, so we're going to ask Kev. Oh, come on, give me a new one. Hold on, there we go. And we're going to do what? Is... What is the origin of the Trinity? Is what I asked him. The doctrine of the Trinity is the a Christian doctrine belief. of the Trinity is a Christian uh -uh. belief that describes God as existing in three distinct but equal persons: the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The origin of the Trinity can be traced back to the early Christian Church, specifically to the debates and discussions that took place among early Christian theologians. The concept of the Trinity was not explicitly stated in the Bible, but rather developed over time as early Christians sought to understand the nature of God and the relationship between the Father, the Son, Thank and the you. I just asked it, what was the concept of the triune God? How did that begin? And see, it talks the about concept the, of Trinity. the triune God, or the Godhead consisting of three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is a fundamental belief of Christianity. Its origin can be traced back to the teachings of Jesus Christ and the writings of the early Christian Church. In the New Testament, Jesus often referred to God as his Father and spoke of the Holy Spirit as a separate entity. For example, in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus commands his followers to baptize people in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Matthew 28,19. The doctrine of the triune God was further developed by early Christian theologians, such Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Now, see, he's there saying is no that evidence there is to no suggest evidence. that the concept of the triune God originated. Hold on. These are distinct from the Christian belief in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as three distinct persons within the Godhead. It is important to note that while the Christian doctrine of the triune uh uh we're not gonna do that uh I am looking for no i m r o d Come on now, get your letters together. Okay, I just said Nimrod was viewed as a warrior, a hunter, and... See, now, they're saying there is no evidence 
Oh, okay. No, no, no. He's still... There is no evidence to support the claim that Nimrod, Hold on. a figure from Mesopotamia... Hold on. I, what he's doing is he's holding on to the previous who were associated conversation. With. Come on, hurry up. I got all day. All right. Please let me know how I can assist you. And if he talks about the Christianity thing? There is a claim in some ancient texts and theories that Nimrod, a figure from Mesopotamian mythology, was viewed as a triune god by some people in ancient times. The claim suggests that Nimrod was worshipped as a god. Okay. The idea that Nimrod, a figure from Mesopotamian mythology, was viewed as a triune god is a disputed and controversial claim. I wonder why. While some scholars have suggested that Nimrod was associated with certain Mesopotamian deities, there is no clear evidence to support the idea that he was worshipped as a god or seen as a triune deity. He was considered a Bible, son of God. Nimrod is described as a mighty hunter and the founder of the city of Babel, but there is no mention of him being worshipped as a god or revered as a deity. Some scholars have suggested that the association of Nimrod with hunting, warfare, and kingship may have influenced later ideas about triune gods or divine trinities in other cultures. Thank you. However, Thank you. So, what it's trying to do is it's trying to be PC. And that's what the system normally does, is that PC stuff. What do we mean by PC? It likes to be politically correct. It doesn't want to hit the nail on the head. And I am sorry that the system, now this tells me it's found 31 tracers, so we'll talk, that in the, talk about this in a second. I have a hard time with it being politically correct because that's how they programmed it, because that's what man does. Instead, because it would offend too many people if it were like me literal straight to the point without mincing any words yes it's very hard for me to to mince my words and to reshape it to account for people's feelings i like i said i learned tack when i was about 14 years old 15 years old i learned the word tact i learned the understanding and meaning of tact very difficult for me because i've always been logical I've always said things exactly the way it is. My mother knew it when I was a kid. Okay, my mother understood that that was my thought process, that I've always been that way. I didn't teach myself how to be that way. It was the mindset. I always said things straight like it was. A lot of people got offended. <laughs> I got my beat so many times when I was a child because I would just tell people the way things were. Okay, sorry. Call it a flaw if you will. but. It is the way it ain't. Now, with that being said, we're going to talk about this program right here. Super anti-spyware scan results. Super anti-spyware. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know the company. I just found this software, but I like it. It's found, and I got to close this because it don't like for these things to be open. It's found 31 different trackers on my system. So we're going to go continue. Watch this. And they're all going to be web-based trackers. All of them. You're going to see Google, Chrome, Google Chrome, Google Chrome. And this one is just one, an actual plug-in. Okay? You guys have got to do this for your sales because you don't need nobody tracking, y'all. And I have a friend that I just was talking to. A young man told me that there is a vehicle that they have that they leased, and he wanted to know how does he go about holding on to that vehicle because he knows that he can write an instrument for it. And I told him, first, you need to remove the tracker. He said, the tracker? Yeah, like the, no, that's the clapper. I said, the trapper. Okay, so, ladies and gentlemen, he was then given a link for Amazon with anti-tracking uh, equipment to locate 
it's called a tracker detector and that will locate the tracker that is on vehicles that will also for those of you who are paranoid and many of you are that will also allow you to go over your vehicle to see if somebody has placed a tracker on your vehicle because we see it in too many movies you know what i mean okay so with that being said again i'm going to run this scan again it does it in my background yeah that's good enough we're not going to do a custom scan we're going to do let's do a complete scan okay so it's going to do that in the background. As you see, it doesn't pull a lot of resources. That's what I like about it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's the way I like it. Anyway, so anti-spyware, and it's called super. Oh, you're just super anti-spyware. Super anti-spyware. Some of you are going to get it. Well, I don't like it. I don't care. I'm not telling you that I like it. I'm telling you that it has done what the other virus scanners look i have five virus scanners on my computer i have this one i have this one i have this one and i can't see the other ones but this is webroot webroot does all right and oh come on 360 total security And then we have the Windows Defender. And I forgot the other one. Oh, Malware Bytes. Malware Bytes. And then we have Advanced Systems Care. None of them conflict. That's why you don't hear me making any complaints about the computer. And one is supposed to catch the other's mistakes. And thus, having this this way, ladies and gentlemen, the way it is, is the anti-spyware has picked up on things they didn't look i have to go so we will talk later give me one second so have a good day have a good night have a good life goodbye